Okay, so I took a quick cat nap. Got a little rest up here. I don't know how to head out. Where's the dead dog? I thought the dead dog was here or something. Oh well. Maybe dog was not dead. Duraz did not hurt the dog. But he was bad about it, of course, but well, what are you gonna do? The other way, he was working for Imperials too, so... Hey, you know, I'm all out of... Uh, arrows, so let's... Get the arrows I did pick up here. Not the greatest, but uh, better... Yeah, see, I have very few steel. I will use the steel if I have to, but... It's a cleared road for you, Argonians. And, well, yes, we Dark Elf. Yes. Dark Elves I do not like a whole lot. They, they like slaving other races, so that's not too good. Yes, they do that to Argonians and Khajiit quite a bit, in fact. Well. I've heard of things. Oh, elk all over the place here. Yeah. I don't remember to do some more hunting. Need, need to do some spend time here doing the old uh, crafting of these things that I've been missing. They've been talking about for a long time now. Very, very much would not be freezing as much with good cloak on. Okay, we'll carry more with. Is that a skiba? I'm in the daytime. The reason I'm afraid of them is because they have diseases, and if that's out in daytime, they must have some disease or a fatter or something. Yes, that, other than that, they don't much care for one way or the other about stupid skeevers. Someone leaves cart in the middle of the road. The others is confused. Ah, lots of game here today. Don't want to cross the river, though. I will find game on this idle river. Yes, Duraz will. At least I try to. Er, at any rate. Oh, you think... <laughs> Did he see me? That was interesting. You are laying in wait for me. Is someone there? Huh? Wait, don't. Well, at least I sprung that trap on them. There are some bandits here. And once again, Dura has not had to do any work at all. You okay? You picked a bad time to get lost, right? Yes, they like the necromancy stuff here, don't they? Can, could you help in some way? No? Okay. Thank you anyway. Um, well, I'll leave that be. I'll leave him be. Yeah, stupid bandits. They, I saw him. Wow, so many people on the road here. Well, could you go ahead of you this time and try and repay the favor here? Might be something ambushing. I did find that ambushment though. Whose house is this? You did not see the ambush, huh? Eh? No. Need something? No, I don't. But there was an ambush on the road here. Eh, fine. Let's go on. With my friends, the three adventurers. Hey, how you doing? Time to rise. Are you, you doing good? From me? No, I don't. Uh, I don't think. I don't think someone wants something from them. That's fine. Need something? No, I don't. What is this place now? Oh, hey, you got quite wrong guard outfit. What is this place? Why? What town is this? Good morning. I told you to weed the garden by sunset, and you didn't do it. Now you're in big trouble. Papa told you to do that, not me. Now leave me alone. 
Oh, there's an inn here. Um, what does Dudra's need here? Well, he's a little hungry. He's got food on him, but man, food and inns is so much better. I wonder if I could stay. Well, I don't really need to stay. I took a cat nap just a little while ago. So let's go in here and just get f a little food. Um, if I get soup, I kill bird, two birds, one stone. Do I always eat the soup? Oh wow, this place is quite busy. Hello. Um. Yes. And I must go back to you. If you need a meal or room, I've got both. Very. You give room to Khajiit. That very uncharacteristic of the Lord. But I don't really need the room here. Ha, first off, make sure I'm topped off here. And let's see here. Take a look. Well, oh, garlic. Pass the ram. It does good to cook beef. Hmm. It does like milk. Buy as much milk as possible. Oh, wait, I'm very over... F uh, I'm very overburdened here almost, so I'll have one soup. Until next time. Yes, need to do. Almost almost necessary that Hello, hello. I'll talk to you in one. Yes. A uh, pretty a pretty's here. Pretty Kajit woman. Hello. Alright, so do I But I've got different. Wait, 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 wait. I had two soups on me. Man, I'm no longer thirsty. I think that bread food was bad. I think we're okay there. You know I gotta talk to her. I just have to. It's a thing. It's a thing I have must do. Ah. Uh, hello! How are you doing? Listen to me, stranger, and listen well. The Khajiit caravans are not to be trusted. Sanyon says betrayers shave their rear ends to resemble the Nord ones they are fond of licking. But Zajira, she is loyal to the Talmor. Her rear end is not shaved. Ah, uh, yes, I... It's, it's kind of a old folklore about that thing, Zajira. Uh, I don't know... I worked with them, you know, they're not really too bad. I mean, I don't know what you have against the caravans, but I don't hate the Dalmor either, it's just they seem to be honest merchants, the caravans. That is what they want you to think. Then, when your back is turned, they are spreading lies about your mother. What? They are saying she raised a litter of scuba addicts. The saviors would never speak such treachery about Zajira. So you consider the time our saviors? Uh, you must be one of them ones that joined up with them when they actually went to war with the Imperials. Well, I mean, it wasn't the majority of Khajiits, but there was quite a number that did join up. Um, so, who is this Sanyan you mentioned? He is a Talmor agent and Zajira's friend. She sends him letters by courier. It has the list of names and locations of potential Talos worshippers. Sanyon then kills the infidels and makes a tableau. That is a fancy elf word for a murder party. <laughs> this gets the really? attention of the Stormcloaks, who then redouble their efforts against the Empire. The saviors get stronger, and Zajira gets a skooma. Everybody wins. Yes, well, skooma is pretty good, I, I, I must admit. Um, sadly, somebody die when the, when the way you're talking about the woman. I, that's sad. Everyone dies. The skooma has told Zajira as much. This makes her feel better about all the dying. Yeah, well, actually, I can see that, because the skooma tells me lots of things, too. Like, uh, well, sometimes dogs have purple, purple fur or three heads, things of that nature, but, uh, you know, Duraz, uh, sometimes, you know, the, the skooma doesn't always speak the truth, you know. Uh, so you actually... 
So the Kathamo are like encouraging this activity? This war? I mean... Uh. Sajira did not say this. That is the meat talking. Does not have nice things to say like the skooma. Yes, well, the mead not quite as good as the skooma. I can understand that, you know. Um, well, I mean, uh, I'm not a party. You, you. So, I mean, are you implying that Thalma and some folks are working together, though? It's, I really wonder about that. Sajira thinks your theory is crazier than a barrel full of ox. Now she is convinced your skooma is better than Sanyon's. You must bring more. Sajira will do whatever you please. Oh, tempting offer. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's go back to what we're All talking right. about here. So, um, so you are a more informant then? Yes, Sajira does good work too. The bodies west of Beeplewood? That was her doing. People come to pray to the false god. Zajira sometimes warns them that Talos is but a man. Yet still they pray. Zajira has no choice but to tell the saviors of their blasphemy. She thinks it would be best if they die. Then they can meet Talos in the next world, where he is just another man scratching himself and smelling his fingers. Yes, Dura is not the same thing, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know if they deserve death, though. I mean, I think they're just a little bit uh, deluded. Um, I, do you think his fingers smell like juniper berries? Zajira does not think so. She has sniffed many fingers and done many unsavory things for her precious skooma. Most not fingers smell of mead honey and blood. But those who play to Talos like to make these out of snowberries. This is how Zajira tells them apart, by their fingers. She has told Sanyon as much. Very interesting. I like your method, but uh, I don't know if I like what you're doing, but the method is quite ingenious, I must admit. Uh, so... So, what are you doing here? Are you just acting as an informer? Yes, Zajira finds Talos worshippers and reports them to Sanyo. Right now, she is shadowing the one called Sonia. Sonia. She is waiting for her to leave the inn and contact her fellow Talos worshippers. Zajira has waited a very long time. Oh, that's sad. But, well... I don't... I don't agree with what you're doing, Zajira. I, I don't... I don't worship Talos. So don't get me wrong here, Zajira, but... Uh, I certainly wouldn't kill them either. You know, they're just deluded, kind of stupid. In, well, Duraz's mind. Uh, I see the skooma laced look in your eyes, so... Yes, he's, you're on the skooma a little too much, perhaps. Um, I'm going to track this Sonya. I wonder if I should tell her. Is that her right there? Is that Sonya? I mean, I... There's a moral dilemma here. Eh, uh, hello. Uh, hey, Sonya? Are you Sonya? Ah! Oh, you frighten me, Traveler. You shouldn't just greet someone unexpectedly. Oh, I, uh... I just talk this way all the time. I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, they could just be very polite. Or blind or something. Okay, so maybe it is just me getting spooked. The Stormcloaks used to say the same. But I have a good reason to be. So you're some sort of Stormcloak, huh? Was a Stormcloak. Now I'm just an ordinary shut-in. Never going to leave this in. As long as Meraki is willing to have me. Maybe I can marry his son, and then they'll let me stay here forever. Uh, so you fancy this person, this Attic? He's nice enough. Got good hair, good teeth, and the inn will be his when meraki has gone. So I wouldn't have to pay for a better room. Hmm. So why are you afraid of leaving? I don't... Ooh. Uh, I understand why you're afraid of leaving, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. I'm cursed. 
Huh? It's been with me since I was a young child. It's the only explanation for what happened at Helgen. Helgen. So you were you at Helgen? I saw the dragon fly away. I was very, very close to that. Uh... No. This was before. I'd just sworn the oath. But, as one of the less talented sisters, I was tasked mostly with retrieving supplies from the city. It happened on a Morndas. I was traveling on the road west to Helgen, and pearls of snow began to pelt my brow. I no sooner blinked when the snowstorm came thundering from above, except there was a piece of black crouched further down the road, a woman wearing a hooded robe, holding a small child. Yes, well, before I was so rudely interrupted by this wench, <laughs> And I use that term very, very strongly for you, woman, that just pushed Durada away. Ah, uh, well. So you tried to help this woman, I think? Indeed. I swore an oath to Ulfric Stormcloak, my brothers and sisters, but my oath to the gods came before this menial task. Strange. Okay, so... Did you try to speak to that woman on the road you found? I called out to her. I was relieved when she stood up. But the relief was short-lived. She scurried off into the forest. It was no place for a child. The sun was dimming, and in the winter, the night is as fast as it is long. The air was cold, but not the kind of cold that pimples your skin. No, this cold was raw enough that you could feel it pass through your teeth, even when your mouth was closed. Hmm, so, newborn babe in forest alone, yes, that's, I guess I see why you would follow. As I said, no place for a child. So I hurried after her. Best I could tell, she was headed towards Orphan Rock. The one place every Nord child in Helgen fears. Oh, Orphan Rock. So what is this Orphan Rock? Tell me, Dura's not from around here. There's a lot of tales parents tell their children to get them to eat their greens or pray to the divines. One of them is the story of the Hagraven of Orphan Rock. Oh no. They used to say if you didn't pray to the Nine, Arkay would send the old hag to kidnap you in your sleep. The witches of Orphan Rock are said to be the grown-up versions of all the children who forgot their supper time prayers. As a young woman grown, I've long since outlived such juvenile tales. But my hand couldn't help but reach for my weapon. So I see. Uh, hmm. So what happened now? Darkness set in. I bit my lip, trying to keep my focus on the woman and the child. I followed their tracks through the narrow passageway formed by the rock. But when I came out on the other side, the trail had vanished. Oh, so they could not find him, huh? So... What happened? I found myself standing in a plot of follow dirt, empty save a rock marker. I called out again to the woman, but there came no answer. Then I called out once more, and then came a reply. It was a knock, like knuckles rapping against a door. And with each knock, the noise grew louder. No, not louder, closer. I swiveled around, and in my panic I dropped my mace. It wasn't until I'd reached for it that I saw it. What? The snow jumping off the dirt, as if the knocking wasn't coming from behind me, but beneath. Higher and higher, until it was right under my feet. And that's when the clouds shifted, and the moonlight lit the marker in front of me. It wasn't a rock marker. It was a grave marker. Oh, I take it you ran then? I did what any sane Nord would have done. When I got back to the camp, the quartermaster demanded to know where I'd been and what had happened to the supplies. In truth, no explanation would suffice. It's just as well, because even I can't explain what was under my feet that night. Very, very strange. Oh, I... Uh, hmm. Yes, I do have a feeling the woman was in the child were buried there. That's what I told my brothers and sisters back at the camp. 
They too thought it was an excuse for not retrieving the supplies. It didn't help that I was known for telling stories by the campfire. To them, this was just another tale I had cooked up like a chef makes beef stew. So not much you can do about it, I suppose. Um, so you'll have to leave this in eventually. No, I'll starve to death first. I am a daughter of Skyrim. I don't fear death. I fear fear. And spiders. But everyone's afraid of crawlies. Yes, well, I just killed some spiders. I'm afraid of them too, to be quite honest with you, but, uh... Ah... Uh, So I suspect this this barkeep would not let you starve. Hmm. Maybe, but it's not as if I don't work for what he gives me. I'm the unofficial tavern wench around here, sweeping, washing, and giving this place the occasional woman's touch. And if a customer gets fresh, I can wield my mace better than any broom. Okay, so uh, so what do you? I don't understand. Oh, lots of things, although they usually happen at night, and when I'm alone. But I can't take that chance of them happening when others are around. Oh, I see. I'd go out and help Redleth pick out mm. cabbage heads, only they wouldn't be cabbage heads. They'd be the heads of little children. Then maybe Ragnar will ride by, still making the journey to Whiteworn as a headless phantom. Or maybe I'd visit Rorik's Manor, and that bear he has mounted on his wall will come alive and reach down and bite him, right while he's cooking. Even here there are times I feel like my presence is a danger. Sometimes when I look up at the animals mounted above Milwaukee, I see the eyes move. As if someone were looking at me from behind them. Wow, I guess you are cursed. Uh, Donna's not really sure he wants to know more about this, um... But I will ask, what is... You know, I'm telling you, this, is this chair so damn important? Huh? I'm trying to have a conversation here. There's like 18 other chairs here, you have to... Uh, forget it. So what brought this curse on, Sonia? It's always been a part of me. You see, my mother told me that I nearly died in childbirth. As a result, part of my soul was close to the void. And the wandering dead were drawn to me in their confusion. Yet, she told me not to worry. As long as my heart was full of life, it would fill that empty part of my soul and ward off the dead. Her advice was unnecessary, as a child's spirit is as stout as shore's bones. It wasn't until I was a girl of twelve, my heart broken by a boy I loved, that at first I yearned for death. You wanted to die? Did that brought this curse on you? I don't understand. It did. It's silly to say, because as adults we experience things a thousand times more hurtful than a simple heartbreak. But never in my years did I feel a stronger sense of grief, or a deeper wound, than when he said the words, No. I wanted to die more than anything, and our case all fit to grant my wish. Hmm. So this curse came on you after your heart was broken, or before? I don't understand. Indeed. That night, as I lay in my bed, the air was so cold, and even in the middle of the sun's height, I huddled under the covers, trying to stave off the cold. I had reached a point where I felt I could sleep, when I heard it. The breathing. So, what did you do? No matter how much I shrunk into my covers, I couldn't avoid that foul hiss, but I dared not look. Then came the sound of footsteps walking to my door. I was about to go into shock when I heard my mother's voice. I leapt out of bed and ran to the door, flinging it open. And there she was. Your mother? My mother, holding a candle. And standing over her shoulder was a wraith. You saw this? Uh... Very, very weird. Uh... Well, how... Yes, well, um, did you kill the Therese? What did you do? Oh, you killed it somehow? I didn't. I did what my mother always told me to do. I wanted to live, then more than any other time, as two lives were on the line. And it worked, until I became a Stormcloak. I think all that talk of dying, 
and going to Sovngarde brought it all back. Very, very strange. Farewell. And now the year you come here to eavesdrop directly, blatantly. Yeah. At any rate, I feel sorry for Sonya. Strange curse she has, but. Seems like she does not wish to leave here, so she's probably safe as long as she feels she's cursed and uh, so Jira will be stuck here watching her forever. <laughs> so I guess this is sort of a stalemate for the two of them. But I suspect sooner or later the Jira will have to make a move or something on her. I don't know. Well, um, and anyway, Duraz needs to be, he's the rest now I think. All this talking. I was planning on going to home outside of Run, but uh, it looks like that's going to happen now. I think I'm going to have to go there tomorrow morning, do my work, clean all these pelts up and sell a few things, and hopefully I get uh, get off the Riverwood quickly and early enough. I guess I'll get the room for night here too.